Becoming a data engineer is a scam and is not worth it. Let me explain. I'm going to start with the data engineering roadmaps, then with the data engineering job market, data engineering fad, and then the state of data engineering today. First things first though, if I would have to start all over again, how I would learn data engineering today? First, master command line basics. Next, practice SQL. SQL for both the good and the bad is still the standard language for interacting with databases and for data manipulation. Next, learn how to move data from one point to another. Now, the big thing is that you need to load data incrementally from a data lake and then stream that data using Event Hub to a database or various variations of this. You see, I almost lost you. I mean, look, even 30 more seconds of this and you would have just clicked away. But hey, it's not your fault. It's kind of boring stuff. So be honest with yourself. And you gotta be honest with me as well. Are you really, really passionate to move data from point A to point B? Are you really passionate about joins and aggregations? I like them too, to be honest, but just for a while and when I actually need to do this type of task, not to do this every day. So how does data engineering help you to evolve? Let me tell you, it doesn't. Because except for getting a load paid job as a data engineer, there's not much else that you can actually do with it by just moving data from one point to another, by aggregating it and joining it. All of this just to help business teams create more random dashboards at the end when you actually deploy those pipelines. You gotta realize that data engineers are just the help for business analysts and for product managers because once you created a data architecture and you set up some data pipelines, the work becomes boring. Unless you actually move on to do the same for a different company because if you stay for too long you're not gonna have much impact can you really create a product with this skill set alone will you be respected at work and will people ask for your opinion about the products that you're supporting let me break it down to you no you're there to fix the plumbing just in case it leaks so at best they're gonna keep you around because you're supporting some important infrastructure but the keyword here is supporting so except for consulting and helping multiple companies with their data engineering needs, you won't be using data engineering to build something impactful past the initial solution design stage. After that, it's just maintenance. So who wants to just be a maintenance guy? Listen, I'm consulting on data engineering and at the same time, I'm doing the same for AI and for solution architecture. And I'm doing that on a narrow stack like Azure and Databricks. So I'm a plumber as well, depending on what the client asks me to do. So don't think that I'm dismissing the importance of the work, but actually let's talk about the important infrastructure that we support. Because companies like Databricks, like Snowflake and Microsoft, they're constantly releasing new tech that tries to automate away all of the parts of the ETL process. And that's great, okay? Because most of the work nowadays is around the extract part. So they're moving towards a no code or low code approach for this area. What the majority of these tools are now doing, they're pretty much just connectors to other SaaS services for data ingestion. And once you get the extract part out of the way, and then you get the load parts out of the way, then all you will be left is with the transform part. And okay, these are custom, so you're gonna still have something to do because you're gonna still need to look at some critical transformations and some custom solutions. But then you actually get into the solution architecture area because you're gonna need to make sure scalability and maintenance are straightforward. So how many people do you think a company will need to achieve this? And do you think they're gonna need junior people for this? I don't think it will need every data scientist that decided that now they just love data engineering and MLOps or the new grads that are just trying to decide whether to pursue data engineering. Because this is a trend that I see now a lot because every data scientist suddenly realized that they love data engineering, really. Now, everybody realized that data engineering is the most important thing. Come on, the hive mind in this industry is incredible. And whenever I see people that are just saying these type of things, I realize that they spend too much time on Reddit. And since data science is dead, long live data engineering. So here's the first reason why it's a scam. Too many people are shilling data engineering like it's the best thing that you can get into. And all of them know that they're just full of it because they realize that they cannot really get a job with their previous skill set. So now everybody's talking about DevOps and data engineering because they're core, okay? And the experimental roles like data science are not that hyped up anymore. So there's a whole lot of influencers that are pushing this because now they know that the market is slow for many other roles. Now, DevOps and data engineering is good, right? And literally they're good, okay? Because there's nothing more exciting to do. And listen, I get that, but the market is still slim for this type of roles. When we think about how many people are out there just trying to do the old switcheroo from various industries into data engineering. So let's look at the data engineering job market. Does it have enough jobs available for every data analyst 
for every data scientist and for every grad that wants to land a data engineering job. You can take any data engineer job description out there and it will include everything that you can think of in data engineering. And it's also going to include everything that you can think of in DevOps and of course a lot more other skills that you need to have. And even that won't be enough because for sure nobody can meet all of the requirements if they've been actually working. And even more so if they haven't been working or if they've been just doing data engineering maintenance in their previous job. Because when you work, right, you have a very narrow focus. You're not touching on every wish list item from a company's job description. And if you stay for too long in a data engineering role, you're going to end up doing maintenance and you simply degrade. You're always going to feel that you just need to learn one more thing because all companies ask for different things in interviews. For example, you're going to need to parse some JSON using Python or SQL or maybe do some lead codes because that's something that you're going to definitely need to do on the job. Or maybe you got to write some Spark jobs to get some data from some random sources or you need to dive deep into Spark or Kubernetes or uh, Docker or whatever they can think of. And at one point you're just going to fail because unless you just learn all day and you just memorize things, you will only have deep experience at a given point in time with only a subset of tools. So another reason why it's not really worth it is because the goalposts keep moving. You got to keep learning. You got to keep pushing that boulder, you know, up the hill, but you never really get to the destination. And let's say you do, let's say you get to that destination. Then you plateau again until the next time you need to start pushing that boulder up the hill again. I understand this might not be 100% not worth it because if you work hard enough, you're going to get there. But for how long can you do this when a new stack comes out every couple of months? There are so many data engineering fads that came out and went throughout the years that at one point you just start thinking, why even learn this? Some abstract concept like data mesh that literally can mean anything that a company wants it to mean. And I think these data engineering fads are great because businesses really like them because it gives them a new way to raise money and get internal funding. Because when a company decides that now they need to move to a medallion architecture or create a data mesh, then it creates projects and then it creates work for the people in that company. And then managers can get a pat on the back. And this keeps things moving until next year, right when they need to find another reason to get funding. But the benefit for you, except maybe getting a job on the new stack, maybe you don't need more than that. And maybe that's okay. Okay. Maybe you're just comfortable with getting a job, but keeping busy, relearning the same things over and over again, you know, it just erodes you. So how can you make data engineering not feel like it's a scam and how to make it worth it? You need to choose a stack and you got to focus on that and you got to milk it for as long as you can. Don't try to be good at everything that a company throws in these job descriptions. You got to pick a stack and you got to roll with it. Don't limit yourself to data engineering. Choose a cloud service provider and get extremely good at their cloud offering on both engineering and DevOps. And this way, as new things appear on that specific platform, then it takes a minimal amount of time to get up to date. That's why getting cloud certified is a great thing. It makes you learn that cloud provider stack. And at Get That Badge, this is what we do. We offer practice exams to help you prepare for data engineer and for DevOps engineer certification exams. We currently have both Azure and Databricks practice exams, and we're adding more every week. So definitely check it out because if you're looking for a way to support this channel, this is a way. You support Decision Forest and you support yourself by learning a new skill. The thing is that you cannot really know every stack out there and just jump on every new trend. Now it's data engineering and DevOps because data science and data analysis doesn't get that much funding anymore. But if you want to be successful in the long run, try and be focused on your own stack and improve there. Don't just jump from one to another. You got to focus on the solution, focus on the industry. That's what really matters.